we always do, Hebrews 4, 2. The Bible says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You pray one prayer and say, Father, let your word profit me. In the name of Jesus. Turn down to prayer. Talk to God, Father. Let your word profit me. In the name of Jesus. Let your word profit me, Father. Let your word profit me, King of glory. Even as I'm the one to speak your word, Father, let your word profit me. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise, our God. We bless and magnify your name. Thank you because you have heard us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, you said in your word that your word is a two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the bones and of the marrow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that your word will cut through whatever needs to be cut today. And it shall surely be profitable unto us. We declare in the name of Jesus that our lives will not remain the same. And that your name and your name alone shall surely be glorified through your word. Thank you because you have heard us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me, please. John chapter 14. We'll read from verse 1 to verse number 6. John chapter 14, verse 1 to verse number 6. And we're talking about the way maker. The way maker. John chapter 14 from verse 1 to verse number 6. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. Can you tell your neighbor, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let anything trouble you. Say, ye believe in God, believe also in me. And this is Jesus. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? I'm sure somebody here is asking that same question. But listen to what he said. Verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. And yet we have men that will say they are the way. Yet we have men that would tell you that Jesus is not the way. There's nobody qualified to tell me who is the way unless they died and resurrected on their own. Hallelujah. And since I'm yet to see any man die and resurrect except Jesus, I will believe Jesus is the way. And there is no other way. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, there's no other way. There's no other way. There's only one way. And his name is Jesus. Only one. Only one. Only one. And what's his name? The primary purpose of Jesus coming to the earth is for salvation. Is to save us. To deliver us. To restore us back to the most high God. Is the bridge that connects us back to God the Father. The way it was supposed to be originally. 
is the one preparing the new heaven and the new earth. The new Jerusalem is the one preparing it. That's why he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And by the way, I'm the GPS that will show you the way there. His father's house. He's the one that knows the way to get there. Who else can you listen to that knows the way to get there? Nobody except him. No one except him. Human mind will tell us, but God is a nice God. God is a wonderful God. Why would they make it only one person that we all must come through? Who is the person he sacrificed? No, answer me. Who is the person that he sacrificed? Who else did he sacrifice? Who else? No one else. So if he didn't sacrifice nobody else, the one that he sacrificed must be the only way. Hallelujah. He said, I laid down my life by myself. In other words, they didn't kill him. He allowed it to happen. How many of us here, they will say, if we kill you, your family will be delivered. And you say, yes. Bishop, I will lay hands on you again. None of us. But he laid down his life on his own. And on the third day, he picked it up again on his own. Who else could do that? Nobody. So if he says he is the way, guess what? He is the way. If he says he is the truth, guess what? If he says he is the life, he is the life. What has he said that is a lie? If I tell you something, go and check it. Amen. I'm only human. Amen. But if Jesus tells you something, there's no need to check. It is the truth. Why? He is the truth. Let everything else be a lie. It will remain the truth. Everything you have heard before, if it is a lie, Jesus will remain what? The truth. So if he says it's the way, beloved, it's the way. Take it at face value. Amen. There's no need to think about it. There's no need to ponder on it. It is the way. Mm. So if it's the way, and he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and take you with me. Is he lying? He's telling you the truth. We've been studying the book of Revelation for I don't know how many months now. We wrapped it up on Friday by the grace of God. And in the last two chapters of the book of Revelation... We saw how the new heaven and the new earth will come from God. He said the new Jerusalem will come down from God because this earth will be no more. So a new one is coming. The one that God designed originally. Hallelujah. So he's already preparing that new Jerusalem now. That's why he's saying, I go to prepare a place for you. So when the place comes down, guess what? Who's going to live there? Uh, you don't know? Look at me very well. No, look, 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 look. look. I will live there. Amen. If I can give you my street address. Amen. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. But you know what else he said? He said liars will not be found in there. 
murderers will not be found in there. Idol worshippers will not be found in there. Backbiters will not be found in there. All mongers will not be found in there. In other words, if one continues in sin, one will not be found in there. Only those who are righteous. But you say, I go, Pastor, you know, I'm, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. So I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't take what's normal. I don't talk about nobody behind their back. I do everything right. Good for you. But have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? In the eyes of man, you may be righteous, but in the eyes of God, what are you? The Bible teaches us that when we try to be righteous, it looks like a filthy rags before God. The only way that it will not look like a filthy rag is to show yourself covered under the blood of Jesus. So when we come before the presence of God, we are not presenting our own righteousness. We are presenting the righteousness of his holy son. And the only way to present the righteousness of his only son is to have met him and accept him as your Lord and your Savior. Church membership does not matter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How much you pray does not matter. Hello? You may know the word from Genesis to Revelation. It won't matter. You know, there are scholars. They know the word. You, they will quote for you from Jeremiah. They will quote from you from Matthew, from Malachi. From, they will quote it, but they don't know Jesus. Even the devil knows the word. After all, he quoted the word to Jesus Christ. Did he not say he will give his angels charge over you? Lest you dash your foot against the stone? He was quoting scripture. Knowing scripture alone will not get you there. It is by accepting him. That is the foundation for you to get there. Knowing scripture is great. Praying is great. I've taught you that. Praise God. So don't get me wrong. But knowing scripture alone, praying alone, without knowing Christ, is a waste of time. Waste, total waste of time. One might as well be in the world, partying like the rest of the world, doing everything there, so you are not wasting your time here. But if you truthfully want to make heaven, accept the way. Make him your Lord and your Savior. Make him the master of your life. Hallelujah. So that when he returns, you'll be in the front seat shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Uh, Philip said to him, show us the way. <laughs> and Philip has been spending time with him. He said, show us the way. It will be sufficient for us. Jesus said, have I been so long with you and yet you don't know me? Let me explain. You can be in the church for 30 years and don't know him. You may be born in the church, raised in the church, rooted in the church and don't know him. If Philip, one of the disciples, can say, Jesus, show us the way to the Father. It will be sufficient for us. Ah, look, look at it. John 14, 9. John chapter 14, verse 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? In 
other words, I've been with you all this while, yet you don't know who's standing before you. We've been to church all this while, yet we don't know who Jesus is. We've prayed, he has answered, yet we don't know who Jesus is. When he fed the 5,000, was Philip not one of the ones that distributed bread? In fact, he was the one that carried the fish. And in his hands, the fish multiplied. And in the end, he carried six baskets worth of fish without going to the river. He's now saying, Jesus, show us the Father. And Jesus had to rebuke him. I've been with you all this while, yet you don't know me. How much more those who would just hear of me alone? So the question is, do you know him? Do you really know him? Do you know who he is? Do you have the revelation of what he has come to do for you? If you are questioning that in your mind, you don't know him. If you are thinking, but I kind of, un mm -mm. no, there is no kind of. There is no kind of heaven or kind of hell. It is heaven and there's hell. So there's no I kind of know him. You must truthfully stand and confidently say, I know him. Hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> Glory be to God. Beloved, people come to church for many reasons. Some people, they come to church to go and find a spouse. And thank God they found a spouse. Some people come to church because there is a little problem that they know only God can solve. And they will come to church and to the glory of God, the problem is solved. So we can all sit here and look all wonderful and dashing. The reason why you are here is inside you. Hallelujah. The reason why you are here is inside you. And there are people that truthfully, they just come to worship God. Let's not forget about them. Hallelujah. The fact is, whatever you are looking for, by the grace of God, you will find it. Amen. However, if you forget the giver of that which you are looking for and go after the giving, you have missed it. Did I say that again? We come for different reasons. But the giver is the only reason why we must be here. Not because of what we can receive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you been used before? <laughs> People move close to you because of what they can get from you. Not because they like you. Not because they want to like you. They just know there's something I see in him. I must get it. So they draw close. You think they are friends. To your face, they'll talk wonderfully to you. But the moment you are no longer there, the true nature will come out. Do you know there are church people like that to God? When you found out the truth, how did you feel? Terrible. Because you thought this world they're my people, my friends. Hallelujah. 
someone I want to always be close with. But the moment they realize either they have gotten what they want or they can't get it, they're gone. They'll be like, wait a minute. What happened? Uh, Jesus knows. Hallelujah. We may not know. But Jesus what? He knows. He said, my sheep knows me. When they hear my voice, what do they do? They follow. Friends, I've come to remind us. Hallelujah. This is not the first time you are hearing this. Is it? Uh, so I'm only reminding you of what you have heard already. Trust this God. Let him be the foundation for which you move close to him. Don't let it be anything else. Not even miracles. Hallelujah. We sang this morning, miracle worker. Yeah, he's a miracle worker. But if all you get is miracle, the miracle will perish here on earth. What will last eternity is what? It's your soul. Think about it. Every miracle we heard in the Bible, he opened the eyes of the blind. The lame walked. Even the dead rose up. Yes? Woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of the garment. She was healed. How many other ones? Countless other miracles. When they die, where's the miracle? No, tell me. When they die, where's the miracle? All the fish that Peter caught that night, and I know we love to pray that prayer, boat breaking breakthrough. Mm. It will perish here. There is none of it that will go to eternity with you. So if your prayer is, Lord, make me a billionaire. It can make you a billionaire. But the billions will stay here. <laughs> if your prayer is, ah, I must be healed by all means. Great. May you be healed. But the healing will die here. No matter what we are trusting God for that is outside salvation, he will die here. It is only salvation that will go with you. So now tell me, which one is more important? It is your relationship with Jesus. We tend to chase everything else. Jesus, wait. I'm coming. Let me get that new job first. Then I'll come back to you. Let me get that promotion. Then I'll come back to you. Give me that wife. Give me that husband. Then I'll come back to you. Solve this problem. Then I'll come back to you. He will solve them. You know why? He's a merciful God. If God said the qualification is you must be right next to me, how many of us will be there? He's knocking on the door of our hearts for some of us right now. Saying, my daughter, my son, draw near to me. Stop chasing everything else. The only thing you need to chase is him. And everything else will be what? Added. Is that not what his word says? Is it Matthew chapter 6 verse 33? Or which? Huh? Which one? Is it Matthew or is it John? I don't remember. But I know it's 633. Huh? Matthew. Seek ye first. The kingdom of? Who is the kingdom of God? And is? 
and all these things you are worried about will be added to you. But we tend to reverse it. We seek everything else first. And when we have time, we'll come to Jesus. <laughs> when we have time. Hmm. Tell your neighbor you need to change. Your. Seek Jesus first. I didn't tell you to say it like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But in all seriousness, he's the one we must chase after. Honestly speaking, there are many other things I had prepared to talk about today. How he is the way maker. But as I got up here, I realized the only thing important or most important is to know him as your Lord and your Savior. That's the most important. But adventure, we don't get our prayers answered. But adventure, we don't receive that miracle. But adventure, we don't see that spouse that husband, that wife you have described to God in the secret place. Must be six feet tall, dark, handsome, must have money. Oh, did I? <laughs> uh -huh. Or oh, she must be like this. She must not be too tall. She must be... I give up. <laughs> But the fact is, but adventure, it doesn't answer. What will you do? No, think about it. Have you made up your mind that even if God does not answer, I will still follow him? Or you only follow when he answers? You know, he can choose not to answer. He can. He can say, nah, that's not for you. Was it on Friday when we uh, were praying in the morning and uh, we, we talk about the, the porter and the clay? And the clay is in the hand of the porter. The porter is the one that knows what he wants to make. Hallelujah. Out of the clay. Based on how much clay he has, how soft or hard the clay is. Hallelujah. Maybe the clay can only make a cup. But the clay now says, I want to be a pot. Will the potter not say, you don't have enough to be a pot. You can only be a cup. And the clay began to struggle in the hand of the potter. I don't want to be a cup. I want to be a pot. What will happen to such clay? It will neither be a cup, neither will it be a pot. The clay will be destroyed. That's what we do when we struggle with God. When we struggle in his hands, he's telling you, this is what I want you to be. But because you have seen it on TV, you have heard it somewhere, you've seen it in magazines, I want to be like this one. But God is saying, no, that's not who we originally made you to be in life. Let that clay pray all he wants. He will never be a pot. Let that clay go for deliverance. He will never be a pot. Because sometimes we are praying to God for what God does not want for us. And then you're saying, how come God didn't hear me? How come? Is that his original plan? Or is that your plan? If it's your plan, you better find out what is his plan. So that you can align yourself to his plan. And then he will make you the best of what he created you to be. 
not the mediocre of who you want to be. The best cup is better than the worst pot that cannot be used. I pray you get that. Even if all God wants you to be is a pen, be the pen that does not run out of ink. If you say you are not the paper, you are the pen. So people will be signing millions of dollars on check with you. Be the best pen. Not, oh, I don't want to be a pen, I want to be the check. <laughs> <laughs> and God will say, you are not the raw material for a check. You are the raw material for a pen. So go and be the pen. And there's no exchanging. Uh, I pray you get what I'm talking about. But it starts with what? Salvation of your soul. Knowing him intimately. Knowing him yourself, not knowing him based on what pastor said. Did you get that? I can talk about him the way I know him. But if you are not in my shoes to experience him the way I experience him, you must experience him for yourself. So you will know without a shadow of doubt, he is God. So when they bring their stupid twisting of who he is, you say, you can call him whatever you want. I know him as my Lord and my Savior. They may say, yeah, but, but there must be other way. There must be other way. It cannot be the only way. Mm -hmm. That's you. As far as I'm concerned, what I know is that is the only way. What I have seen is that is the only way. Hallelujah. I want to stop there so we can pray. Amen. Amen. But you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet. Glory be to the name of the Lord. If you are here to know him intimately the way you ought to, there's a simple solution to that. Amen. All I will ask you to do is close your eyes. Place your right hand over your heart and you will talk to him. Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to meet with you today. Please forgive me of all my past wrongs. Please accept me as one of your own. Please wash me clean with your precious blood so that when you present me before your Father, I will stand before him righteous. I promise to follow you from today and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. So that indeed, Lord, you can show me the way and be the way in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you truthfully pray that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. It's as simple as that. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. But now you will still pray, Father. Father you are the way maker. Way maker. Make, way Make way for me. In the name of Jesus. Talk to God, Father. You are the way maker. You are the way maker. You are the way maker. Father, make way for me. Make way for me. You are the way maker. 
You are the way maker. Make way for me. Make way, make way, make way. You are the way maker. You are the way maker, oh God. Make way for me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Lord and my God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Psalm 42, verse number 1. Psalm 42, verse number 1. The Bible says, As the heart panteth for the water brooks, so my soul longeth for you, O God. We're going to pray that God will give you a heart that will chase after him. In the name of Jesus. Talk to him, Father. Give me the heart to chase after you. Give me the heart to chase after you. Give me the heart to chase after you. Give me, give me, give me the heart to chase after you, Lord. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart. You alone are my heart. Desire. if you walk in the church let Jesus be the reason you are here not because of the job not because of the work you pray that prayer again mighty God the heart that will chase after you please give me such a heart in the name of Jesus Christ. The heart that will pursue you. Yes, my God. Regardless of what I face in life. Regardless of my present circumstances. Regardless of my present situation. The heart that will chase after you, Father, please give me such a heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. John chapter 4 verse 24 says that God is a spirit. Hallelujah. And what? He's seeking those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. You pray, they pray, Father, make me John 4 24. Make me the one that will worship you in spirit and in truth. 
with no ulterior motive. Mighty God, make me the one that will worship you in spirit and in truth to your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Lord and my God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we thank you. King of glory, we worship you. You said in your word that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Father, the revelation we need to have of you. Please give us that revelation. As we are here as individuals, there are different ways you can manifest yourself into our lives that we will know this can only be God. All I'm asking, Lord, is that you will show yourself to all these, your children, that they will know this can only be you. And through that, they will trust you more. Through that, they will seek you more. In the name of Jesus. Father, the hunger we need to always chase after you. Give us that hunger. And please let us never be satisfied in the name of Jesus that we shall always be hungry for more of you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.